Um, one of the tweets that we've pulled here was you weighing in on this question of children and vaccines on Twitter before it was transformed into X. This was in March 2021. You said you're replying to somebody who's saying that younger people should get vaccinated and you you say no, thinking that everyone must be vaccinated is as scientifically flawed as thinking nobody should. COVID vaccines are important for older high-risk people and their caretakers. Those with prior natural infection do not need it, nor children. And then you've got a little notification under there. This tweet is misleading. Learn why health officials recommend a vaccine for most people and nobody was allowed to share or like that. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, reflect a little bit about that period of time, the the old version of Twitter and what it was like um, trying to communicate uh, uh, under that that kind of regime. Well, first of all, I think what I said there is true. So uh, I don't think it was misleading, I think, and I think uh, it has been confirmed to be true. Uh, but it's, it's shocking to me uh, that I'm a scientist and I'm saying simple, basic uh, public health facts mm -hmm. and that that's being censored because uh, it contradicts something that the government uh, thought, which actually turned out to be wrong. Uh, so uh, if you had told me f uh, four years ago that I would be... Uh, uh, censored, uh, I would have thought you were crazy. That could never happen. They would censor uh, scientists. And of course, this is true information that uh, that uh, Twitter censored. And and in this particular case, we know it was at the behest of the government because the government funded this uh, uh, entity at Stanford called the Variety Project. So they funded the, funded them to go after. Uh, certain things on social media that the government didn't like. And it was the Variety Project who contacted Twitter and said, please uh, uh, do something about this tweet. So we know there was a, a clear link from the, from the federal government to pressure the social media companies to uh, remove uh, uh, what in this case was true information. Now, I think that f the First Amendment rights is, is important whether the information is true or false. So if you want to claim that the earth is flat, you should be allowed to do that. Nobody should censor you for, for saying that. Uh, but uh, in this case, the, the, the social media companies censored accurate information at the behest of the federal government. And to me, that's kind of shocking. And it wasn't just Twitter. It's also, I was censored by YouTube, which is owned by Google. I was censored by LinkedIn, which is owned by yeah. Microsoft. And I was censored by Facebook. So. I've actually got that. I've got, I've got that clip of you being uh, of the YouTube uh, takedown as well. This is where you appeared in March of 2021 with uh, Governor Florida Governor Ron DeSantis doing a roundtable discussion uh, with uh, some other epidemiologists. J Jay Bhattacharya was there. Um, let's roll that clip because that's another one worth reflecting on now in the rear view mirror of 2024. Let's see like how bad was what you were saying in this round table. Uh, Ian, could you roll that clip? These lockdowns and uh, contact tracing in mass, they were not able to prevent uh, uh, a, a resurgence of the disease during the winter. And the problem is that the belief that the pandemic could be suppressed through these lockdowns meant that in a lot of places in the world, people did not use focus protections of the old. They thought that the lockdowns would protect the old, but they didn't. So they didn't put in the, the standard public health message to actually properly protect the older high-risk people. And I think that's very tragic and it has uh, led to uh, many unnecessary deaths among uh, our older citizens. For all people, have to be very careful because this is more dangerous than the annual influenza. But for children, this is less dangerous than the annual influenza. So we should have utilized that feature of, the, uh, of COVID to uh, protect the old with focus protection while letting uh, younger people live normal life to avoid all the collateral public health damage from the lockdown, which are enormous. Uh, Dr. Gupta mentioned about, you know, not putting masks on kids, that's not effective, not necessary. Uh, Martin Calder, do you agree in school, there's no, no need to, for them to be wearing face masks? 
Uh, children should not wear face masks, no. Uh, they don't need it for their own protection and they don't need it for protecting other people either. I believe that was that last comment that uh, angered the YouTube moderators um, spreading misinformation about children and masks. Um, you know, reflecting on all that now, is there anything you would change or say differently or do you pretty much stand by all that? I stand by it. And I think uh, uh, this issue with masks is actually very problematic because we know from, from randomized trials, from one from Denmark and one that was done in Bangladesh, that uh, uh, the protection for masks is either zero or minuscule. Uh, the Danish study find no benefit, and the Bangladesh study found a benefit between reducing it by between zero and eighteen percent, which is almost nothing uh, or nothing. So, uh, the, actually, the fact that people were told that the mask would protect them is actually very dangerous to do. It's a very bad public health messaging. Because you then have people, like older people, let's say the 75-year-old man that Liz was talking about, he may be, oh, okay, I like to go to this crowded restaurant, but uh, yeah, I'll put on the mask, and everybody's wearing masks, so it'll be safe. Well, that's not the case. During the height of the pandemic, a 75-year-old man should not be in a crowded restaurant. So it's dangerous. But then you told people, well, wear a mask and be safe. That's then a very dangerous, they give sort of a, self, a false sense of protection. And then, so I think people actually died because they were falsely told that the mask would protect them. So when it, when they didn't, so that's very dangerous uh, public health measures thing to do. So they shouldn't have done that. What, what did you? What was your reaction when you heard that that roundtable with the sitting governor of the third largest state in the U.S. was taken down off YouTube? Yeah, I think that was. Uh, Again, shocking because uh, you even censor a governor, a, a elected governor of a, of a state. Uh, but that's also related to uh, LinkedIn, for example. I, I retweeted or I reposted uh, something. I didn't add anything on myself. Just reposted something that was said by the, uh, the state technologist of Iceland, which is sort of the equivalent of the CDC director for Iceland. And that was censored. So they even censored the official views by uh, a, a foreign government uh, official. So it's clear that uh, they were willing to censor anybody who uh, said anything against the official narrative. And I think the reason they did it is that they didn't have any arguments. If they had had good arguments, they would use those in a debate and explain things. Since they didn't, they had to do either censoring or slandering, and they did both of those things. Hey. Thanks for watching that clip from our show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. And please subscribe to Reason's YouTube channel and the Just Asking Questions podcast feed for notifications when we post new episodes every Thursday.